I was walking through the voting polls, as it were, and I felt so dirty. I felt spiritually nauseous, and I literally felt like God was saying, you're not even supposed to be here. I don't believe that I need the church. The church needs me. When you become reliant on a monetary system, you start becoming reliant on the government. If you start to really do research, like unbiased research, and try to understand what's really happening, it's a rabbit hole, and it's a fucking scary one. I've done myself down in order just to go to a party. I've, I've held my tongue and not talked about certain things just so I could fit in. And I'm not smart enough to be stupid. I wanna talk about real things. I wanna talk about compare and contrast of how beautiful God is and how, much, how beautiful the faith is in comparison to how ugly the world is. And they're not ready for that. This is Unwoken, where we tackle the hard hitting issues and bridge the divide between the political left and right. From free speech and gun rights to the rise of wokeism in our schools, the media, entertainment, and even our government. We're diving deep with experts who are ready to speak the truth. We won't agree on everything, but it's time we learned how to talk, really talk. The conversation starts now. I got to say, your content is out there. And coming from a guy that does what I do, that you still there? a lot. And I didn't do a lot of um, a lot of research must be somewhat there. Got on, going on your content outside of what I've seen on Instagram. Yes, but you got to yeah. explain to me, man, because I'm not sure how that goes. I've never seen somebody create content the way you do. And I know it's going to be fucking interesting. That, I, I think, is an understatement. But you need to explain to me what this means. You're pro oh, Christ, sorry, sorry. but anti-Trump. That is a very interesting comment to make. Um, yeah. Uh, first, first, more, we just lost connection there. So I literally just got your last part about what you were saying with Trump. But yeah, um, basically, when you understand counterfeit Christianity and the things that I've dug into, you don't see the world between political spectrum of political party lines. Um. It, like, like, for instance, Trump does have a name etymology that traces directly back to Baal, the way that they love him over in Israel, which is not the real Hebrew. It's a uh, you, which, again, that's a relig- religious practice, not an ethnicity that I'm against. Uh, just always clarifying that for folks because they're trying to merge the idea. It's just like with political parties. I'm a Republican. I was like, well, are you a human being? Can I talk to you like that without your political? Kelly's <laughs> coming up as uh, can't as do that pul- anymore. Un- yes. Unfortunately, no, you need to belong. Yes, with this group or that group. And I'm very similar to that scene. Uh, I think it went around a little bit viral in uh, Stein, at Steinfeld, where you're saying, well, why do I have to wear the blue ribbon? Can I support you without having to wear the ribbon? No, you need to support. So that's kind of where that I'm at. That was Kramer like, and Seinfeld, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. It's very about similar the, to about the march. Yes. And I'm, I'm very contrarian because I'm against both sides. So that's the first thing. And secondly, I voted for him twice. I'm not doing it anymore. Um. And I think the first time it was my first time voting in comparison to Hillary, like I'm not an idiot. I was like, oh, you know, she's crazy. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, awake, I'm awake enough to know that that's definitely not a good candidate. And Trump's kind of coming out of left field. So it's not even, it wasn't even my first choice. And then uh, by the second time I was walking through the voting polls, as it were, and I felt so dirty. I felt spiritually nauseous and I literally felt like God was saying, you're not even supposed to be here. Why are you wasting your time? And from there, it's kind of been a journey where I've dug into a lot of Bible research and I've come to the conviction that we're not supposed to be voting, which I know that's got to throw everybody for a loop. But when you find out the foundation of why America was founded, you kind of go, okay, I see where you're coming from because we are part of Mystery Babylon the Great. I am 100% convinced of that. Explain what that means for the people that don't understand because I I wanted I, I want to put it into perspective because you and I have never spoken until today. Like it's the first time that we do something face to face. We've exchanged texts, but that's it. Right. I want right. to put it a bit of context just to make sure we're on the same page because the, the people that this podcast is for are really people that are sitting somewhere in the middle and they're like, "What the fuck is going on? What yeah. the fuck is happening?" Because you know, I'm a conservative. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. Love it. I align more with what the Republicans are doing, not because I'm a a Republican, just because my morals align more with them. But as a Christian, this is a completely different story because I can look at Trump's policies about abortion and I'm like, you're wrong. Right, right. Abortion is murder. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. 
It was never meant to be used as a contraception. It was you. It was meant as something that is an extreme case. Like there are extreme cases where it's hard for me to argue rape, incest, and things like that. But that's right. less than one percent of the cases. Ninety nine percent of the cases are people are women that should have kept their leg closed and men that should stop sleeping around. It comes yeah. down to morality. Yes. So that being said, I always find it very challenging. And keep in mind that this is the people that I want to talk to. They might not be religious, mm -hmm. but they're really sitting in a space where they're like, what the fuck is going on? Because in a two party system, we're fucked. No matter what, we're fucked because we're always going to vote for the person that represents more of our values, but not at a hundred percent. We're not, we're not marrying those people. Right. Right. Correct. Um, and that's speaking for myself. I'm that's all you I can do, do, man. Yes. Yes. Cause I do understand immediately when I start stating my perspective, it's like, I have such an original opinion that I'm considered, you know, controversial for just stating it. And that's usually by the Republican aspect, because I have a political mm -hmm. compass where I'd say conservative as in i agree with a lot of stuff that you just said libertarian as in you do you i yeah. do me i doesn't mean i support what yeah. you're doing i do believe in less government if anything i'm a tribal libertarian where you have the elder you respect him for his age because he got there for a reason all the men would be voting it's not to send my representative to speak for me no all the men come in here and we respect femininity not feminism in the in the tribe we all defend it like back in the day it was every woman in the tribe was referred to as mother because it is it takes a village to raise a kid you it's a cultural thing today. It's like, no, get your kid off my lawn. You know, as that's where I'm against. And secondly, um, knowing the origins of where coinage comes from, which does connect to the world trade centers, uh, it is very likely attributed to Nimrod's son, Tammuz, the occult Messiah figure. And what does Christ constantly say in contrast, render unto your government, the things that are at your government, Caesar, but uh, you know, don't forget your spiritual priorities first and foremost to Christ. And they're going to because you're here in this realm at this time that's an expectant thing of you um the rich man can you get rid of your riches no he can't um and so when you find out that that connects to nimrod's son in the beast system because that's what everybody's becoming reliant on well you know we want my money this thing you know and it is becoming a thing of this world whether it's patriotism whether it's materialism it makes you become how do I state it? You're kind of have, forming a buffet religion as a Christian, very subtly. Right, right, right. Um, a lot of Christians, like we can't, I couldn't even talk with a lot of Republicans right now where I'm at with you because they would be going, well, what do you mean? And again, they would be arguing policy after policy after policy. And this is the thing. They want us arguing over the semantics of whether this platform's okay to listen to it from information, whether that politician, and we argue all this stuff, but it's like as Christians, a saint is somebody that's supposed to be set apart from the world. So again, I am against the idea of money. If I was sure going back to tribal and you, it'd be kind of like the Amish. We only use the money when we go into town. Otherwise we just hang out, we barter and we trade because when you become reliant on a monetary system, you start becoming reliant on the government that's giving set money to you. And when you trace the dollar bills, they all go back to the 13 families. So, um, so yeah, conservative libertarian, I am, um, was, what was the term? There was a founding father that said he's a Christocrat. That above all any political huh. things, I am a Christocrat, that Christ should be first and foremost. Um, that's in, also in my bio description. That Christ should be first and foremost in any decision before anything in the government. And then fourthly, the contrarian aspect is, even though everybody's saying this, I pull a little bit of a carpe diem, look at things from a different way. And I am honestly, whenever I do those political tests, I land up like smack dab, then in the center. Not a little bit this way, not a little bit that way. I'm like right in the center. Because I understand enough of the liberal aspect of the humanity aspect that generally is coming from, you know, I went through a lot. Um, I sympathize with animals. They fill, fill the blank. You, that's typically a liberal aspect. And I understand it. I'm not saying I go for the full hair dyes and whatnot, because I think that's where you start going a little bit too far in your cray cray. But I'm conservative enough to say, okay, so we have a problem. And I'm humane enough to say, where's a way that we can, I prefer communication, try to negotiate, try to break that barrier um, and explaining to folks where both sides are coming from. And that's kind of where I've landed with most of my content is being the centrist um, investigative journalist is I'm showing you both sides. I'm, I'm writing in my scripture where you can get books, where you can watch other stuff and then try to sit there and mull it over. 
Um, somebody like my bro, uh, my buddy, he, I told him, I said, can you take a fast from daily wire for about two to three months and start watching some of this other stuff? You can't do it. And this is when, you know, you are programmed to propaganda because propaganda only wants to hear the side and the narrative of the perspective that you want to hear. You're not willing to hear the other side. So that's kind of how, where I'm coming from. Um, I do sympathize heavily with what you just said with conservative cause that my buddy was saying, well, you're conservative. Why, why aren't you voting for Trump? I'm like, I'm not voting for anybody. Well, you know, if you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain. I'm like, yet yeah, you're always quoting George Carlin that made fun of everybody for voting. And what did he say? I don't vote and I have every right to complain because all y'alls are the ones that keep him in Coleman. So. And I'm a big fan of George Carlin. And yes, a lot are, a lot are. Well, he was a libertarian just like I am. He was a conservative libertarian just like I am. So I, I agree with you a hundred percent. And th this, this is where this podcast comes from. This is the okay. exact idea of this is how can we bridge the gap between the political left and right? Yes. How do we make people understand that we are more alike, that we are different and that our decisions should not be based on emotions, but on fact and yes. morality. Well, I would argue morality and there's sure. a great, well, where does no, it come from? Right? Well, where, where does the morality come from? Cause there's this morning on tri on threads, there's a woman that said that keep your religion out of the school system, out of politics out. And she starts blasting a bunch and she has like 70 to 80,000 followers. So she has a, a following. I responded yeah. to her. I'm like, how ironic that you treat your beliefs like a religion, but will call bullshit when I do the same. Do, yes. do you see the irony? Do you, yes. everything you believe in is like a religion to you. Your morality is based on what you believe in. So you're basically putting as much importance as I do on Christ, but you do it from a moral standpoint that is based yes. on nothing. Yes. You pick and choose what you believe in. I believe what was written 2000 years ago. Amen. Yes. Um, and that is exactly what they did by design. This is why I call feminist Christianity as you're thinking with emotions and impulsiveness, you know, because, well, you know, Jesus is loved. And then it's like, no, he has some standards. I mean, there's a reason Israel got the bill of divorce in Jeremiah 3, 8. And when you say that to folks, they're, over here, they're trying to find every justification of like, no, no, that's wrong. It's like, that's why communion was a thing because it is a new covenant, new Testament, a new ketubah. Because if they're getting no divorce, you have to understand when were they married? Um, and this is where a movie time changer really made me think, uh, it came out in early 2002. It's semi cheesy, but it's for free on YouTube. If folks want to watch, I'll understand where I'm coming from, where the guy invented a time machine. He's a Christian and he's arguing with a gentleman that just published a book or he's having it up for review. And this one guy on the board, this, this time traveler guy, he's saying, like, I think you're missing a huge point here is that you're, you're pushing good morals and you're telling this boy not to steal, but you're not giving who the ultimate authority is. And he's like, well, what's wrong with that? He's like, well, you know, you have to give the name of Christ. Cause when we quote Shakespeare, we say Shakespeare. So when you are giving authority of who you are referring to with your morals, you have to I'll give it to who the, um, authority of your life is and wh where, where you're coming from a basis at. And he's like, well, I think we can attract people with good morals. He says, yes, but the ultimate, yes. Yeah. The ultimate thing is when you take out the name of Christ, it begins to lose all meaning. And then people can create your truths, your definition yep. of thing, which is what the sophists, um, and again, this is where we get the word sophisticated. They were a philosopher group movement where they would accept money and then they would basically orally give you an entertainment, like a soothsayer. I'm going to give you the narrative you want to hear. And I'm going to make it sound very pretty and eloquent with the rhetoric. And again, it's your truth. I'm going to make you happy. And this is what we get with our news. I'm going to tell you the narrative you want to hear when you tune in to me tonight. And then you're going to parrot that when you go to work tomorrow, you don't do any thinking for yourself. I would rather watch no. the news than read a book. I would rather, you know, this is what they've got us dumbed down to. And it's like, I'm seeing a world of idiocracy where it's like the book is right on the shelf and you'd rather be tuning into your black screen than actually try to invest and understand the world. But this is how the education system's treating us, right? They're, yes. they've never, they're not teaching us anymore how to become critical thinkers. They're telling us, learn what we tell you. Well, just learn what we regurgitate to you. And yes. we will test you on how good 
you can retain that information, not on how well you can debate me. Yes. If you don't agree with something, research it, build an opinion based on facts, yes. and then challenge people on their beliefs. And it's interesting because you were talking about your friend earlier that you recommended he takes a he takes time Rats. off of the Daily Wire. It's if you look at my screen as somebody that creates content for a living, I have probably right now 12 different tabs open from all spectrum. I pay yes. for aggregator news that I can research a certain subject and it will show me leftists, rightists, people in the middle, how do they report the news? I look at it and then, as you can tell, I have, I have a lot of books and this is probably a fifth of the book that I have. I read a lot. I love because it. I, Oh, because I want to keep real information alive because it's too easy to remove from the internet. So I know that if I have the book version, I can always go back to it. Yes. But the point of the matter is that we need to do research and it is not it is not encouraged anymore. The debate portion of it is not encouraged either. And we tend to softball everything in order to make it palatable. Just like that's my biggest gripe that I have with Christians and especially pastors. Pastors are soft as yes. fuck. And it is not just some places. My my wife and I have traveled the U.S. We've gone to 23 different states in the past two years, okay. coast to coast to coast. We've explored, we've been attending churches in all of the states that we lived in or that we stayed in, not lived in, but stayed in. Right, and right, you know right. what? Outside of one guy, Pastor Carl out of Colorado, I've never had somebody call bullshit where bullshit was because they were trying to make it palatable. You know how many times I've said to Christians that Jesus was an asshole? He's not a nice, by today's standard, he's not a nice guy. He's, he, he wasn't there to tell you, oh, you're such a good person. No, fuck you. If he didn't, if he knew you were wrong, he would put it in your face. He didn't give a fuck how you felt about it. Yes. The Bible he wasn't there. Your links. He did not go out of his way to piss people off. Yes. He told the truth. However you reacted to it was your fucking problem, not his. But he yeah. always did it from a place of love because he wants your soul to be saved and redeemed. Yes. This is the portion that's never taught. Camilla Harris telling me that God is love. Well, fuck you. Love, ain't, love sucks, bro. Love is hard. Love is fucking hard. You know how much, it, how hard it is to be an asshole out of love. Yes. It's a lot easier to keep your mouth shut when somebody you know is doing something wrong than to go to them and say, hey, bro, you're not supposed to be doing this. This is wrong. And I'm only telling you this because I love you and I care. I this is the part that's never, that's never spoken about. And unfortunately, pastors in Christianity, and that goes from coast to coast in the state, in Canada, they're soft as fuck. Yes. I it, it, it think there's a... There's a verse, as in Psalms or Proverbs, it's like better to have the words from a, a, a friend than a kiss from an enemy. Uh, again, it might be a little harsh to hear, but it's like, literally, I'm like, and that's why I always tell folks, I said, do you realize how much emphasis we placed on the building, which is a luxury, not a necessity. And really? we have, I, I was just telling a guy right now, and he said I was being condescending, and I didn't use any words of that nature. I literally just, because he was saying what's what's wrong with, you know, says this uh, Seventh-day Adventist guy, he has nothing to do with Mace, or you know, the church has nothing to do with it. And I said, that's the part you gleaned off of. I said, the founder was a 33 degree Mason. And because we don't talk about Masonry, Jesuits, dark societies, the occult, it's like, like you were just saying, okay, here's the thing, paganism, what is it? Well, that's Satanism. Okay, what's Satanism? You don't know, do you? Like, what, what's their practices? What's their end game results? What, what, where's their origins? You don't know. And this is why so many Christians are going to be susceptible. Because again, when you get somebody like myself that's going, I know where Christmas trees actually comes from. It actually represents Nimrod's phallus. Reitz represents his mother's vagina. And right. And again, they're going to be distraught because they, again, groves unto Ashtaroth and Baal. We read it. What is it all about? Can we break that down, please? And most people, they do not know. And when you bring it up to them, you think that, and again, they go up and they're just like, you know, Christ day, you're challenging my authority, um, your authority. I'm, I'm questioning your ignorance because if I'm trying to share something with the ecclesia on a matter that you're not educated in, you just say, well, that's Gnosticism, that's this, that's that. But you really don't know what that is. Somebody like you and me, we picked up the book. I've read their websites. I am, I am showing you visuals. 
because I don't want you to take my word for it. I'm recommending you pick up the book yourself and come to your own conclusion. But it's, is it going to be nice to hear? No. And most times when Christ made a cameo at a temple, what happened? Get out of here. We're going to stone you. Fill in blank. That was like 90 plus percent of the time when he made a cameo. But when he went to somebody's home personally, there was immediate change. And that's the thing is that we don't have discipleship at today in Christianity. It's like Protestants are a lot, are basically Diet Coke Catholics. A lot of churches are Diet Coke because they're over here going, okay, we got rid of the, the confessional booth and the statues, but the rituals are still pretty much the same. And you still reverence the holy man. You have to refer to him by his title, which is an adjective of what he does. It is not who he is. Anybody can be a pastor. And I know that's going to be something that goes over somebody's head because seminaries, the disciples didn't need it, right? Why? Because they were led by the Holy Spirit. Man has created institutions and the institutions create ideologies. And when an individual starts, I created a, like, was it was those little paradigm circle boxes. I said, when you start being pulled in those two directions or both of them, then you become religion. Then you become a philosopher. And then I'm not saying there's something wrong with philosophy. I'm just saying when you make that your microwave philosophy, your good morals, when you make that your identity, that's when it becomes a problem. And this is why I have a problem against like Zionism or Republican, Democrat. When you're making that your personal identity, as opposed to being set apart from the things of this world, you might have a little cancer in you and you're not going to like me because I'm going to try my best, if you allow me, to help you get away from that because I'm, that's what I'm supposed to do. Any Christian's supposed to do. If I love you, I'm going to try to help you. But a lot of people don't want that. You know, it, it, it's very interesting what you said because I, I I was having a conversation with my wife's buddy the other day, like two weeks ago, just after my wife and I just got married a couple of weeks ago. Oh, and congratulations. Th thank you. It, it was a long time in the making. Oh, uh, you know, before I get there, let me ask you this. So marriage, the institution as the church, because I'll tell you right off the bat, I don't believe that I need the church. The church needs me. I don't need the church to learn about Jesus Christ. I really don't. I have a personal right. relationship with God that I maintain on a daily basis between him and I. I don't need a third party to be in between myself and God. Yes. That being said, I see the value of church as in it's a Too place weird. where people with shared ideas can go or, you know, if I'm reading the Bible, I do a lot. I don't just read the Bible. I study the Bible. Yes. I will only read four to six verse a day with my cell phone and my laptop open and I'm researching everything that doesn't make sense to me. And what I have is a study Bible. I'm trying to understand what it means. Yes. That being said, we have been trying to get married for more than a year now. And we've approached multiple pastors because we wanted to do it the right way. We knew we were living in sin because we've been together for more than three years. Okay. And I wanted to, we wanted to get married to make it right in front of God. That was our main goal. I don't care about the ceremony. I don't care about the people that are going to be there. It's between our God and myself. This is why I wanted to get married to do it the right way. Right. Yet we've had, we've asked at least four pastors from four different states in the U S from completely different places in the, the U S like, not just like around Colorado, like from coast to coast and even Canada. They all refused to marry us because we wouldn't be part of their congregation. So I've come to learn that pastors see marriage as something they can use to grow their own church when all they are is a tool of God. I'm they not getting married to be part of your fucking congregation. If I end up doing it, I do, but I'm a world traveler. I'm always going to be traveling. I don't stay in the same spot for more than six months at a time. At, at that, at best is six months, right? Yet, how is marriage related to a pastor when the pastor is supposed to be a tool, a God's tool to unite people in the right way in front of God? Mm -hmm. I just found it very, very interesting that it's a guy that I met getting rid of old uh, studio equipment. I was selling headphones on Marketplace, on Facebook, of all places. The guy came in, turned out he was a pastor. We had a super long conversation and he ended up marrying us because God in a prayer told him that he was supposed to marry us. 
So he did the right thing. And it's with a conversation with his wife when I'm like, when, since when is marriage a tool to be used by pastors when they are the tool to help Christians do the right thing? It absolutely blows my mind. Yeah. But the, the question that I, that I wanted to, to ask you, I was having a conversation with my buddy, with my buddy's wife, which is, she's a very uh, dedicated Christian slash Republican. And she says that as a Christian, she has the right to judge others as long as it's done through righteousness. And as much as it is true that the Bible says that you have the right as a Christian to judge others as long as it's righteous, that it's done as per God's law. Yeah. She never went or she, I challenged her because I'm like, okay, sure. I'll agree with you. But how are you really helping others if you're not sitting down with them? If all yes. you're doing is pointing your finger at them and say, yeah. you're wrong. The Bible says you're wrong. But that's only the first step. You don't get, Jesus never just pointed their finger, his finger at someone and said, you're wrong. Fuck you. And I'm out. No. He sat down with them and tried to make them understand why sit down with them to say, let's build a relationship. I want you to understand where I'm coming from, but I also come at this out of love, not out of just trying to correct you. Right. I'm doing, and don't you agree that this is something that Christians are very good at? They're very good at pointing their fingers and say, you're wrong. Here are all the verses that I can quote to tell you that you're wrong, mm -hmm. but they don't seem to ever be interested in sitting down with those people, those sinners, and just spending time with them. Because you're not going to change. If all I'm doing is pointing your wrongs, you're never going to listen to me. If I don't take time to sit down and understand who you are, where you come from, what you're past in, why do you believe what you believe? Yes. How can you ever expect to change someone if you don't give them the time of day? And no. don't you agree that this is one of the problems that we're facing? Like, we're very judgmental as a religion. Yet, if you track back 2,000 years ago, what made Christianity grow so much so fast is that we believed in sharing with people that we didn't agree with. We believed in being kind, compassionate with those people, yes. even though that they were wrong. Yes. And th that... I had, um, this last week, I, I'm not going back for this week. Cause he wants, I, I saw part one on the, on the bulletin thing for the outline for what the pastor was preaching. I said, oh, great. You're going to do two parts on this. I can't bear it. And I want to go up on the, on the freaking altar podium area and freaking debate him because he was equating Muslims to be in the same category of like barbarians of the Holy Roman empire or, you know, immigrants on this southern border. And I was over here going, dude. I don't think you're going to be one of those people that get into the kingdom of heaven because you're also telling me to rely on a king of this earth, which first Samuel eight really lays out for God. I don't want somebody to intercede between me and my people. I want to have a communion with them personally. And you guys keep putting in a substitute. I only speak through men of God, prophets, whatever, because they're the only ones that want to commune with me. And then when they speak up on my behalf, thus say it, the Lord, they turn me away immediately. And that goes back to the parable of Christ. I sent, they sent, uh, this guy sent one guy, messenger. They got rid of him. They sent the second message. They got rid of him. Finally, he sent his son and they got rid of him as well. And again, what was Christ? That was the word made flesh. You literally rejected the word. You put it on an altar and said, we don't want it anymore. And don't take my word for, uh, John 1 14 and revelation 19, 13 literally says that is the name of Christ. And I don't buy the triune thing because no man comes to the father, but by me. So you don't go through God to get to God. No, it's, I am submitting to the word, which was made flesh and given in love because listen, I put up with a whole crappy relationship with my original people. And eventually I said, I'm done. Cause you guys keep flirting with the things of the world. I am trying very, very hard to have my people of God explain it to you that what you're doing is breaking my heart and you did not want to submit. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to see you go into bondage or, you know, whatever, but this is what you keep doing. And I have to allow it because how am I supposed to be your provider, protector, and provisioner when you keep cheating on me with your heart? So eventually we get to Christ and this is where communion taps into what you're implying. I'm, 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 I'm flushing this out, but communion, we've butchered that because a lot of us are going in there. We read from like what Chronicles or whatever, 
They read that little uh, 1 Corinthians or whatever, and they're beating ourselves up saying, all right, take a moment, think about him dying on the cross. Why? Why am I doing the Catholic thing where we're worshiping a guy at his weakest point, quote unquote, as a man hanging on a cross dying, or we're praying to a symbol where he died upon and he conquered that according to Hebrews, brought it before the throne of God, and it connects to his doppelganger, Tammuz, which connects to Baal. He conquers that. And that, that's the thing we're remembering most, but it's like, okay, let's go right back. What was going on during the Last Supper? He was demonstrating a marriage contract. Because back in the Israelite culture, a, a father would bring a young man over. He would vet him, make sure he had a good provision. He you know, didn't have a criminal record, fill in the blank of all this stuff. Make sure that he could carry on the baton well-being for his daughter in a marriage ceremony. So he'd pour a glass of wine. This was a sign of a contract. He'd hand it to him. The young man would drink of it, half of it. And then they'd take the rest of it and they'd hand it over to the daughter. And it wasn't patriarchy where this was forced. It was right here where she could say, not too keen on the option provided. I'd like to go back to the drawing board. Okay, and we can do that. But if she chose to accept the rest of that cup, she was approving of her father's selection provided for her. And what would the young man do? He would go back to his father's house and add on to the family house to induct in his new bride. And he would return within about a year, like Revelation, I come to reclaim the, the, the bride, bride of Christ. He would return in about a year to claim his bride. And what did Christ say? I go to prepare a place for you up in my father's house. So the whole aspect of what Christianity is, is a marriage. It is a relationship. And the thing is, are you going to be accusing your spouse every other day of something that they did wrong? No. Are you going to give 50-50? I hope not, because that's compromising already. You're going to give 100% each side, and you're going to help build and cultivate and help that person become the best thing that they've ever been, right? A partner in life can either be a, an anchor or a sail. They can hold you back, or they can push you farther than you've ever been. And this, as a pastor, is what you're supposed to do, is help cultivate your congregation and walking away from your old old man, your old self, and coming a new a new man born again. And this is the, the second part to that. When you're reading a ton of times in Acts, especially, they say, are you baptized in repentance, like John the Baptist? Or are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Oh, uh, because when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, your old man, your fleshly desires is dying to self. You're going into a new celestial relationship. And throughout the entire Bible, what does it say? Adam knew his wife. Abram knew his wife. You are becoming one flesh, spiritually speaking. And if a pastor can't get that down or the average congregant, um, this is something I've noted in line of what you just said. When I'm sharing like a big Mike Obama reel, that gets shared all over the place because how deplorable, they're so horrible. When I'm sharing a little bit more of a heavy hitting thing, how dare you say this about this person? How dare you? And then I'm over here like, See, when it's the real stuff, you're not willing to invest or deny or dig into it further. But when it's something deplorable, immoral on their behalf, that's the thing I'm going to share around and judge and make laughing ha emojis because that's all I can understand. You know what I'm saying? But it's a big, it's a big spill to swallow. And if there's, if there's, you know, I, I've been called a conspiracy theorist before there was a term for it. Yes. Like yeah. I, I've been, I'm 42. I started this when I was 14, right? I've always done research. Oh, and, wow. oh, I've been in conspiracy theory ever since I was 14, way before there was a term for it. But nice. Nice. It, what I've come to realize is it is a very hard pill to swallow. Because if you start to really do research, like unbiased research and try to understand what's really happening. It's a rabbit hole and it's a fucking scary one. It is a scary rabbit hole to understand that the people at B do not like you. They don't care for you. They don't see you as their equal. That for most people are like, what? So yeah. you mean my life has no meaning, which is why having a, having a figure like Christ saying that I will submit to him yeah. from the get go, all the rest can take a backseat. But you need to be able to question. You need to be able to understand what's actually going on, or at least want to understand what's really going on. And yeah. I want to go back to something that you said, because, you know, throughout the Bible, you have, uh, you have prophets that are used by God as a tool to 
share his belief, to share his word, to make the average person understand that there is a greater power at B that's working on everything that's going on around us. So if you look at the political atmosphere that we are in right now, where only one of the two sides seem to be throning Christianity, and a lot of pastors are throwing themselves behind Trump saying that, yeah, you know, right. the, the first assassination attempt where God made him turn his, I know you've seen those, you've seen those meme, right? God Sorry. made him turn his head and it clipped it in the, if it wasn't for God, he'd be dead. I'm yes. not agreeing or disagreeing because I don't claim to know what God does. I'm just a man. I don't fucking understand what his plan is. But what do you say to the people out there that believe that Trump has been sent by God or is a prophet for God, which is why they're voting for him as a Christian? Well, I think this is, I, I was writing that out the other day, um, is that mankind is seeking a savior figure among men as opposed to accepting Christ, which came among men, right? They're accepting a guy who on his menorah award had the verse from Isaiah, Prince of Peace. They're accepting a guy who literally has a song called The Chosen One, and he is aware of it. He shared it on his social media. He did not deny it, did not denounce it. An Israeli pop song, they call him Jerusalem's Prince. I'm seeing an immense amount of blasphemy and arrogance from an individual. And I say quotation marks. Christians are making exception and defense over at time and time again. Christ himself stated, my kingdom is not of this world. And I'm seeing a lot, especially within the West, a lot of Christians are defending the kingdom of this world that is destined to fall and perish. But when it comes to advocating for Christ, they're fairly silent on that regard. Instead, they try to equate Christ with country, scripture with science, the world with the word and God and government as the same thing. All of those things should be set apart. And when you mingle and merge the two, that's kind of like what Catholicism did. It, it's just camouflage paganism. Uh, um, but the whole premise, even with the American flag, it has very Masonic ties. It actually connects with the East India Company. Uh, folks want to watch an episode that did One Nation Under Satan, and that will flush that out. I, it's very thorough. Um, and it kind of breaks your heart because we're pledging, which was the Bible say, don't pledge to anything in earth or in heaven. We're pledging our allegiance to people that are dropping chemtrails on us, which Trump has never talked about, by the way, we're pledging to people that are, you know, messing with our food supply, no one's abolished the FDA. And then we're also dealing with an individual, which if you're believing in biblical cosmology, give it as it may, which does, if heliocentricism does trace back into Baal. I have a, a thing, um, Helio Baal was one of the Persians. And this guy creates Space Force. And he's working with a guy which names everything X for Osiris Rising, which is a connection to Nimrod. So I'm seeing a lot of subtleness within one individual that a lot of Christians aren't looking for, that he converted to, uh, it was a Judaic Orthodoxy back in 2017, which you literally can Google this one. They don't believe in Christ. He's a fictional figure. In 2015, he says, I don't really ask God for forgiveness. I, I just try to do better from there. So I'm not seeing an individual that's humble. I'm not seeing an individual that's denying titles being bestowed upon him. I'm seeing a guy that's eating it all up. And personally, I'm seeing him laughing at, at, at Christians for their gullibility because they don't know anything about the occult. They don't know anything about masonry. They don't know anything about Jesuits. They don't know anything about what the end time game is for these guys. Their favorite thing is not going after sinners. It's going after inactive saints or ignorant Christians. He can't be God, weaponize his own people. That is the tragedy that a lot of people are not understanding. And that's where my heart is grieving is because if they did dig, they wouldn't be buying the political theater of, oh, he wounded his ear. Because if you're going by their texts, a priest is anointed by blood on the ear, blood on the hand, and blood on his feet. And what's one of the first things that Trump shouted out as he's getting let off the stage? Where is my shoes? And in a clip that I have, the rabbi was stating, quote, and, and 
October, I think it was October 2nd of 2027, there's going to be an announcement related to Trump during his administration with that event. So, oh, and then thirdly, so people who don't, you know, Palestine thing, who cares? Trump has been trying to negotiate peace terms over there since 1983. And um, you can find this on On Point Preparedness YouTuber, uh, Trump's Dove Prophecy. And he has stated that he has had plans to be the negotiator in that region. Don't believe me? Well, on the Temple coin that was commemorated when he did the Abrahamic Peace Accords, they have Trump's face on the front with King Cyrus. And if you read their text, their Messiah figure is not a Jew. He is Gentile. He is like King Cyrus. And he eliminates their enemies for them. And ironically enough, in Israeli national news of 2020, Trump is the champion of Noahide laws. And he has stated at a rally after the uh, Tree of Life synagogue shooting in Pennsylvania, at a rally in Illinois, he stated, quote, it's time to bring the death penalty for anti-Semitism. We can't allow this hate to continue. And his followers are all clapping and cheering. Um, so their Messiah figure is King Cyrus. And on the back of that temple coin, you have a third temple with a dove on it. In the front, the inscription is reading, Cyrus Trump Belf uh, Balfour Declaration, 1917 to 2017. Exactly 100 years. Coincidentally enough, Aleister Crowley, 1917, wrote a novel called The Moon Child for how do we conceive an Antichrist figure. Trump was born during a blood moon. And his mother's name was Mary Christ. Um, and his dad's name was Frederick Christ. His aunt's name, Martha. And he was born during a blood moon between the two tips of the moon. Um, in their texts, Mithra, an equivalent of Tammuz, their cult messiah's um, Nimrod's son, Nimithra slays the bull, which is supposed to represent God. I'm finding that all very interesting because Trump is born around with this bull thing. He has connections now with the Balfour Declaration, according to their own things. And Balfour Declaration, for folks who are not aware, I, I should explain that, sorry. Um, that was when Sir Arthur Balfour and Ro Rothschild signed over Palestine to a group of the Zionists so that they could move over there. Um, and this is documented. I did another episode, No Such Thing as a Holy Land. Um, but it basically, that is equating Trump to knowing about the Balfour Declaration to understanding what his role and purpose is. And third, he is acknowledging that we need a third temple because on the bottom, it's I think it's a verse in Jeremiah that he has appointed me to build him a house in the holy city. A third building is Antichrist because what did Christ do? Dies upon the cross, he says, into my hands I commit thy spirit, it is finished. Cool, what happens? Temple veil rips in two. What was in the Holy of Holies? The Ark of the Covenant which had manna in it, which had the Aaron's rod in it. It was God's word encapsulated in here. That's where God's presence was. And when that temple veil rips in two, this is him rebuilding the temple, which a lot of Christians don't grasp. This is why we are grafted in, because when that veil rips in two, greater is he that is within you than he that is of the world. Know ye not your body is a temple of the Lord. Not about a building anymore. It's where two or more are gathered. We can meet at a house. We can meet at a park. We can meet at a Dunkin' Donuts. Not about a building. So for me, in summary, sorry, that was a bit, a bit much, but in summary, I'm seeing a lot of Christians, they don't understand the significance of a lot of the metaphors that Christ did. And you're not understanding a lot of the symbolism that the occult is blatantly showing in our face. And because we do not understand, we keep going into that voting booth and they're laughing at our Stockholm syndrome because we are statistics of gullibility for them. You know, this, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on, because I'm not saying that I agree with you. I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm, I know that your research is extremely thorough. I know that you take a lot of fucking time to research and what you say is not just your opinion. It right. is actually based on what you unraveled through research. But at the same time, I cannot stop myself from wondering when, is it not a problem when we see everything as a conspiracy? Because this is something that I'm facing all the time. Uh, and this is why I try to be very careful about the type of content that I create. And a lot of it is based in humor, similar yes. to George Carlin, right? I, yes. I understand the role of the jester that he had towards the king. You, 
You're the only person that can tell me, that can make fun of me. I, I, I even hired you for that purpose. Correct. So I understand why George Carlin did it the way he did and why he's probably my favorite comedian of all time with Dave Chappelle. Because yes. they do it through humor, but what they're saying is extremely serious. Mm -hmm. But that being said, do you not think that it's problematic when we see conspiracy everywhere and we try to look for those conspiracies? Because it's not just, because take you, for example, you're not just looking at something for what it is. You actually try to see if there are, there are signs of the occult. And like in numerology, for example, you can find numbers that fit your agenda if you want. You can Correct. always find statistics that will back up your opinion. Do you not fear that's exactly what you're doing? Not at all. Um, and I know that's, that's great that you brought it up because um, Ephesians 5.11 says, had no part with fruit, unfruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Um, as well, your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. What does a lion do? They go after the weak one. They go after the one that's straying from the third. Because if you're uninformed, you're easy to deceive. It's kind of like, uh, as I've explained this analogy before, if you don't go to the casino, then the house will never win. You have to participate in the game in order for me to win this thing. That is part of the creed and motto of the occult. But if you don't bother to play their game, and instead you're exposing how the game is played, that's what we're called to do. That is the word. And Revelation 18, 23 says, The voice of the groom and the bridesmaid was heard no longer in thee. For thy great men of the earth were the merchants, and by their pharmakia, sorceries, big pharma, were the nations deceived. So if, if that's true, which again, I take the Bible as true, the word was heard no longer in thee. What are Christians? We are arbiters of the word, right? We're supposed to be ministering. We're supposed to be the a-holes, as you've referred to before. We are supposed to be um, keeping that light alive. And what is the uh, Psalms? I think it's 119. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. When you get to the sleeping bridesmaids parable, what's significant about this? You have five that were awake. You have five that fell asleep. They fell asleep and they also forgot their oil. And they had to go running home until they finally found their oil. And by the time they made it to the marriage feast, the other bridesmaids were gone and the party's already in full swing. When they knock on the door, what happens? Get out of here. Depart from me. I never knew you. So what, what were they missing? Because if thy word is a lamp unto my feet, right? We understand this. They were missing oil. What is oil? It's Holy Spirit discernment. It's context and clarity of what the word means. You can carry around that Bible as the day is long and you bump into pastors like that. And you're arguing, you're, you're using this to make yourself an authoritative figure. You're using this for your own monetary gain or your popularity and success. You're not using it to reprove or to counsel or to cultivate your congregation. Right? So what is oil? It's Holy Spirit discernment. If you don't believe me, you know where Christ was praying before Judas came over to kiss him? It was the Garden of Gethsemane. Right? And we know what Gethsemane translates into? oil press and what were the disciples doing they fell asleep the parable was for you guys and this is going to be the future churches they're going to fall asleep they're going to i was right here in front of you right what did Pilate say what is truth explain that to me please the body man of truth is standing right in front of him but he doesn't understand it he doesn't see it now you have the disciples we've heard all these parables we've heard now in the moment the pinnacle moment where i need you to be on fire praying to the heavenly father you know what you guys are doing passed out because you didn't understand any of the parables of these celestial things i'm trying to break down for a man to understand because if i tried to explain it from where i'm from, you would not understand a single iota of the things i just laid out for you that's how powerful it is they didn't understand until they saw him come back blessed are those who believe but have not seen so as a christian yes i absolutely you should be digging into the word however should you be digging into things like q no what you should be doing is always calling out and condemning the things of this world because that is honestly the greatest obstacle for an antichrist. Why? Because he makes war against the saints. Revelation 24, and I saw the heads of the saints who died for the witness of the word of Christ. So what are we doing? We're looking at history. Does history make sense to you? 
No, no. Do you not science? Let's look at science, okay? Wanna look at the stars? You wanna look at the earth? Let, let's understand. Evolution real or not? You might think it's nothing, but there's a reason why God has put up generations, people who've written all those books. I'm like you, I have three rooms full of books. There's a people who have carried the baton and laid it out there at the time that they were at. So when we dig that, dig into it, compare it alongside scripture, we can explain it to those that are truly seeking, right? As we says, ask, seek, knock. If you're not seeking, you're going, I mean, if you're seeking, you're going to understand how dark this world is. You're going to feel like I don't belong here. That's good because you're not supposed to be here. You are being prepped to go to a celestial kingdom. I'm ready to die at any time. That scares some people because they're like, you're way too young to be saying that. I'm like, no, I see how corrupt and immoral this world is. I see how sleep people are and they don't even understand. And I'll close with this one. When he's healing the man and he does it in phases, remember the one where he spits on, he spits on his, on his, on his, on his fingers and then he rips some dirt on there. What does he do? What do you see? And like trees walking, we usually just skimp over that. What's significant about this? Young gentleman, the man who has not seen in his entire life, let me show you the world as I see it. My, my own disciples don't even know this one. I'm going to give you this gift before I give you your full sight back. I see a harvest of men walking around. They are ripe and they are ready. But they're walking around because they're not willing to get rooted into the word. They're not willing to become invested in me. Well. Wow. You're seeing the world as I see it every single day. Here's your sight back. Now imagine you're sitting there reeling and he just ends up with saying, and don't tell anybody in the city because they're not ready. They've always been denying everything else that I've done, but I'm going to give it to you because you had one person had enough faith to look for me. Pretty profound. And we just skimp over that miracle like it's nothing, but it's like, no, I did that. That's a gift. That's a double gift I gave you. You asked for one thing and I gave you double because you were the only one in Bethsaida to actually seek me. That's very powerful. Does that answer your so question? So what's the point? Uh, yes and no. It, no. it answers it as in, it proves to me that you're very researched, that you do take the time to look and actually just look at the events that happen and try to make sense of them. That I can tell. However, again, if you're right or wrong, I can't prove it because you seem right. to be more researched when it comes to the implication of the Bible and especially the read between the line moments. I'm a newly Christian. I've only been doing this for about a year now, but okay. all to say that I can tell that you're research that I don't think anybody can argue about, but it still comes down to when is it true or when is it a conspiracy theory? When are we trying to look for something that it's simply not there? Because okay. at the same time, like the other day, for example, I had, um, I, I just posted something along the lines that it, it's impossible for you to vote Democrat if you believe, if you believe in the family unit, if you believe in free speech and gun rights and small governments, and yes. you believe in God. You can't vote Democrat if you believe in those five things. The first response, obviously, every time I post, people assume that I'm a, I'm a Trumpist Republican. They don't understand that I'm a conservative from the get go and I'm a Christian. Yes. Before all, but yes. the first responses are always, yeah, but you're looking at a guy that has cheated on his wife, that's been married and divorced. I'm like, okay, sure. But King David also committed adultery and even killed somebody over lust yeah. in order to be able to sleep with that woman. So one of the messenger, one of the most prolific messenger of God did very wrong in God's eyes. Yet Jesus can be tracked down to his legacy. Like you can, through the lineage, David was the, what came before Jesus, but they are related by bloodline. Yes. That being said, we are taught, we are humans. We are imperfect. We are not meant to be perfect. There's Correct. only one perfect man that ever walked the earth and he wasn't even a man. Let, let's agree here. And I can tell you, it ain't fucking me. We're not talking about me here. So if I look at what you're saying, I look at with the understanding that I've been in that rabbit hole of conspiracy theories for almost 30 years now. Yeah. Yeah. It's very easy for me to say, or to see conspiracies everywhere to yes. make the word, whatever I'm reading fit my agenda. Correct. Because I can look at a guy like Trump and say, you know what? 
If I have to vote, I can't vote for Kamala Harris. I'll vote for Trump because he represents more of what I believe in, more of my of my own beliefs as a person. At the same time, I understand that he's flawed. At the same time, I understand that he's human, that he's going to do a lot of things that I don't agree with. And right. again, I'm not marrying the guy. He's not my wife. I'm not spending the rest of my life with, I'm literally voting for the one that makes the most sense to me. Right. This is how right. I see him. But don't you find that it's a massive stretch to go from this, understanding that he's flawed, understanding that everybody in the Bible outside of Christ was flawed, and to say that he's the Antichrist? Because this is a massive fucking step between the two, right? As mm -hmm. somebody that is listening to this that's maybe not even a Christian, they're like, you guys are fucking retarded. Like, what's wrong with you people? Absolutely. Like, yep. this is exactly why I don't like religion. You guys are there. fucking nuts. Yep. So how do you put both together? Because to me, even as I listen to you, and this is what I wanted from this podcast, this is why I'm letting you go on massive explanations because I <laughs> want to try to understand. No, but I want to understand where oh, you're coming from. No, yeah. Because yeah. once again, it's not about if I agree or disagree with you. It's about us having a conversation, especially with people I don't agree with, because there's a lot of things that you say I don't agree with you. But that doesn't mean that you're wrong. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. It doesn't mean that I'm right. I could just be uneducated on the subject. That's why I'm not, I'm not here to debate it because I don't know enough to, to, to correct you. But it seems like a massive stretch to me to go from a flawed person to saying that he was born under certain circumstances as the Antichrist. And I can push it even further. If you go through Revelation, there's no other way to open God's kingdom to us then by having the Antichrist be born. Like, we don't have a choice. It's been predicted. We need to go through. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. That I think we can agree on. So, isn't he supposed, if he is the Antichrist, isn't he supposed to come to light either way? And he's going to have to do what he's supposed to do no matter what because it's been predicted either way. And it's only, Christ will only come back once the Antichrist is here, because that's what the Bible says, right? Correct. So, like, how do you relate both? This is the portion that's easy. hard for me to grasp right now. Is yeah, is no, he no, flawed? no, absolutely, he's flawed. Nobody can disagree with that, right? Right, but right. To go from a guy that's flawed to he was born to be in the Antichrist is just a very hard pill to swallow for a lot of people, and even for me right now. Absolutely. Um, two episodes, again, One Nation Under Satan, to understand the conception and I, why I don't think voting should be anything we should be dabbling into. Um, and the second one would be King of the Yews, because the cross, Christmas trees, and corona all do interconnect. And when you understand um, the mockery and the symbolism of the cross, you will begin to start seeing ties connecting directly to Trump who was the individual that signed Operation Warp Speed on their hermetic Kabbalah tree of life. Um, in Hebrew, it's known as Kether when you were asking about Kabbalah earlier, and this is stuff that Tucker and Russell dabble into. Um, but at the very top, it's called known as Corona in Masonic Latin. And I found that interesting because it means spiked crown. What did they put on Christ's head? An inverted spiked crown as opposed to their God or their, their Messiah figure, Helios, which crowns go outward like you know statue that's, of liberty that's the same one we saw at the olympic at the opening ceremony of the Correct. olympics right it's yeah. either at the opening or at the end we saw that that actual crown you're you're referring to correct and you'll see it often soul invictus this is what catholicism believes in and so i'm not doing the presentation um so when you're understanding the world trade centers when you're hearing the dancing israelis why were they dancing they're just dancing because they're jerks. No, this meant something to them. Bring it because things we we we're a lot. Of, that's what I'm chuckling. A lot of times we're we're seeing things, but we're not really asking ourselves why are they doing the things that they're doing. And we're again we pointed out, and of course we sound haphazard, stupid. You share something, and they say you're anti this. You're you're pulling at strings. This is really a stretch. I get it, but like you said. A lot of people aren't as well researched, nor do they care to invest time into digging the things that I, I've dug into. Not that, again, I do believe, if I had to encapsulate that, is that intelligent people only thrive off the ignorance of others. I'm willing and open to share it freely, but unless you dig, 
and try to understand where I'm coming from or listen to an episode and show, because I'll show you visuals. I will show you reels. Um, you're not going to understand basically where I'm coming from because the Twin Towers represents the two pillars of Freemasonry. And in order to ascend in the world to become enlightened, you must walk between those two pillars in order to ascend. You ever hear the word enlightenment? Mm -hmm. I think of, of it this way. Enlightenment. Find the mm -hmm. inner light of God within yourself, which we see a lot within New Ageism, correct? That's ultimately what it's going to start coming down to for Christianity, is find that little inner God within you, as opposed to, no, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. You don't hold the word. And, it's, and again, thy word, I hit in your heart. I like, I understand it, but I'm holding it to direct my steps so that I don't start stumbling around in the dark, not understanding what, what is the ways you've laid out for me. In the word, we begin to understand what it is that God has laid out for us. In the world, we're looking for a man as a substitute. That's actually the word for antichrist. It's not evil incarnate as we picture and envision it and we're picturing an apocalyptic world and stuff like that. No. In fact, it says what, what's going to happen. It's going to be like the days of Noah, but everything's going to look normal. People will still be getting married. Things will go. Here's the thing. They predicted three world wars, Albert Pike, in a letter to Mazzini, um, I think it was August 15th, 1871. He predicted that the Russian Tsar would be overthrown. He predicted World War II with something going on with Germany. He said World War III is supposed to be against the atheists and the nihilists. But the most cheap target out of all of this was supposed to be Christianity. So you want to see brutal savagery occur on the global scale. We're already hearing wars, rumors of wars. Um, we're already seeing elements of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. When you look up the star of David, it is actually the star of Remphan condemned in the Bible, um, both in Amos 5.26 and Acts 7.43. It represents the joining, the conjoining of the elements, which is alchemy, which is fire, air, water, earth. And when you combine these things, we already have the elements to become our own gods. We don't need you. We are divine on our own. That's what that star represents. So we have what? Fires, wildfires, right? That's an element of the apocalypse. We have air, which is them dropping chemtrails. We have earth. They're diluting our food. Um, what's the other one? Air, water. And then water. They are putting fluoride and crap in it. Those are already elements that are at play. And the 33 uh, Olympics... We have the white horse coming onto the scene. They're already showing us we're this close, but how do you make Christianity during War Bowl III? You don't exactly go after all of Christianity. You go after the ones that have been deluded into thinking, I get out before it gets really bad, so I don't need to really witness to anybody. It's their fault if they didn't come to church. I got the rapture extraction plan. No rapture happens. Christ doesn't return into Jerusalem. And you have everybody reeling and going through all this trauma and saying, I thought Christ was supposed, what happened? And then you, you launch something like a project blue beam on the heels of that. Don't worry. We're here to help you guys find your inner enlightenment. The angels under the river Euphrates, they come back in this form and we're going to help you find that way. Mithra, Jesus, Buddha, fill in the blank. We tried to send the right messengers for you guys to get it, but you've always been missing the mark. Don't worry. We'll help you find that mark by becoming an inner God yourself. And this is where the empire of iron and clay man accepts this and become like a sim character why do you think they have sim cards in your cell phone created by the internet given to us by cern named after the celtic god of the underworld cernonis root server for all computers is known as demon which is the slain body of a nephilim giant the fallen watchers what do they want to do they want to have their kids come out and have bodies back how do you do that you create an international acceptance of a monetary solution system, which again, a businessman would be pretty good for that, wouldn't it? I would think so, right? And this is where I come back to the thing with um, Bale and Trump, which again, McDonald's has connections with Bale. But here's the thing, Donald means world ruler, whatever. Trump to deceive or one up or outdo someone else. Maybe it's just a weird coincidence. Let's keep going. Donald stems from Adonis. Adonis's equivalent is Dumazid. Dumazid is a Sumerian goat shepherd god. Pandemic, pandemonium, baphomet, hermaphrodite, right? Fill in the blank with all that stuff. 
Um, Dumas' equivalent is Tammuz, and Tammuz in the Greek was known as Hermes, god of alchemy. Um, Mercury traces directly back to Marduk and Baal. Dawn means Lord. Baal means Lord. So, Tammuz is Christ's pagan doppelganger, and his symbols are the all-seeing eye, the caduceus staff, the infinity logo, and the cross, the symbol which Christ died upon. Trump is wearing a hat that says MAGA. What's the word MAGA mean? Not just the abbreviation of what that means. It means mage, great illusionist, or high priest of the sun. Ironically enough, Nimrod was the originator of sun god worship. Um, January 6th. According to the Catholic tradition, it's the epiphany of John the Baptist, where allegedly that was the day that Christ was baptized. And it's also the day as an adolescent, Christ was allegedly visited by the wise men, the Magi. The root word for Magi, Maga. Trump creates truth social. What did Christ say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. There was a insurrection. What did the crowd choose, Christ or Barabbas? They chose the insurrectionist. So I'm seeing, for me, there is a lot of elements here that is being blatantly shown to us. If we open our hearts and minds, we got rid of the holidays, we got rid of patriotism, we got rid of all this extra trimmings of men, the religion. Because when you have a relationship with Christ, you're seeing all of that as distractions. It's pulling me away from my focus. I'm focused for the kingdom of heaven. I don't care about the affairs of this world. When I try to merge the two, I don't see things clearly. I'm looking to find the Holy Spirit and I'm trying to live and activate and, you know, emulate the word in my life so that what? I prompt people to ask the faith and hope that's within me. So I might sign far out to everybody, sure. But didn't the prophets, didn't the disciples? I mean, look at Mars Hill. All the philosophers, they're going, okay, you, uh, Paul, you're one of the leaders of this weird philosophy movement across the empire. People are leaving temples. People are, you know, leaving the parishioners of idol worship. What is this new philosophy? It's not a philosophy. It's a faith. A faith. Well, you're converting an entire empire without drawing a single sword. Please come atop of Mars Hill and explain this to us. Okay. That is what it's supposed to be as a Christian, is that you don't need to draw a sword, as Peter was thinking he had to do. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. You don't need to fight. You need to explain. You need to articulate. You need to sit down and have talks with people. That is what prompts people to start changing, not putting their faith in a government man-made system. Um, Trump has a lot of, I think it was God made Trump and he posted this on Truth Social and he posted it to the tip of his uh, profile, like whatever you could pin. And it was made by Paula White Kane. And in there, there is a phrase where they say, quote, God sent Trump to be a shepherd unto mankind. What did Christ say? I come to separate the sheep from the goats. Trump's affiliated with the shepherd God with goats, with Dumazid. So again, for me, it's elements of seeing, compare, contrast, and understanding the counterfeit, because what is a counterfeit? Looks just like the real thing. But if you don't understand what the real thing is, how are you going to see what the counterfeit is? Does that give an explanation? I'm sorry, I know it's a little very elaborate, but again, I'm trying to explain where I'm coming from. No, it's good. I, I actually right. appreciate you taking the time. That's why I'm not trying to interrupt you okay. because I really want you to have the whole goal was, again, the whole goal of this was not for me to agree or disagree with you. I okay. just wanted to know some of the ideas that you have. Mm -hmm. And I like to ponder what people tell me yeah, that's, that's before I make my opinion to say I agree or I disagree. Right. I want this to... I want to ponder it. I will discuss it with other Christians, friends of mine that are more knowledgeable than I am and see what I think of it. At the same time, I will play devil's advocate and agree with you. I will just, although I don't agree with you, I will play devil's advocate to say, I agree with you. Let's say that I totally get what you're saying and research proves that you're right. As a Christian, What's the next step? What am I supposed to do as a Christian right now, knowing that no matter what I do, I'm fucked? Because this, if, there, this, if, there, if there's a reality in being a Christian, yes. you're going to be hated and yes. you're fucked. No matter what, your life has been surrendered because yes. you're betting on the afterlife. 
your life right now, you try to be as righteous as you can, help as much people as you can. But at the end of the day, I'm always thinking about how will I be able to explain my behavior to God? If yes. I ever face him and I need to explain myself, how will I be able to explain? Did I do more good than bad? At the end of the day, this is how I try to live my life and understand that I will fuck up. Yes. If there's yeah. one thing, there, there's only about two truths in life. I will continue to fuck up. Oh, there's three. I'm going to die. I'm going to continue to fuck up. And there's a God. Yes. So those are my three beliefs that I, those are my three core beliefs. But yeah. as someone that is either spiritual or a Christian that let's say agrees with you, what am I supposed to do right now when yes. I am seeing the world falling apart? Everywhere that I look, the world is falling apart. But if I chose to turn off my phone, if I chose to turn off my television and just concentrate on interacting with the people that I have in my life, I would not be aware that I'm fucked. Because if there's something that I've learned through COVID, eh, I, I stopped watching the news during COVID. As an experiment, I tried to not look at the news and you know what happened? I would have never known. If it wasn't for the fact, because I'm unvaccinated and I was, I'm Canadian. So as an unvaccinated Canadian, I was part of the 9% of Canadians. I was not allowed to go anywhere. I couldn't go, I couldn't go to the gym anymore. So I had to build my own. I couldn't teach martial arts anymore. So I literally stopped teaching and I was training one of my buddies in his own personal gym. That's all I could do. But the point in the matter is that the only two places I was allowed to go was the pharmacy and the grocery store. Even if I fell sick, the Canadian government wouldn't have treated me because I was unvaccinated. There's really? some people that got refused medical treatment in Canada because they were unvaccinated. So I understood if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't on the, because of the restrictions that the government put on me, I would have never known that COVID existed. And you're talking to a guy that in order to protest COVID restrictions in Canada, I was giving free hugs at the protest. So like the, the trucker protest that everybody heard about, I was there, I was giving nice. hugs to people. Nice. I, I was in every single protest in Ontario or Quebec where I'm from, giving hugs to people. That's how I choose. I chose to give love to people I didn't know. Instead of protesting negatively, I did it in a way of love, right? Nice, yeah. But yeah. What, what am I supposed to do outside of, because if I turn everything off, I don't really realize what's going on. Food's more expensive. Everything's more expensive. Mm -hmm. But as someone that is a very well-traveled individual, I can always find people that care. I can always find great people. I'm in Alabama right now, bro. And I've never seen people so nice. People are so nice. They salute you. They don't even know you. They're, hey, how you doing, brother? Black, white, orange, purple, don't even matter. That we, we literally, we go to small cities, we leave the big cities to go to small cities and we see kind people everywhere. Nice. So what am I supposed to do as a Christian when on one side, I'm very political. I always think about Denzel Washington that says, if you don't follow the news, you're uninformed. But if you do listen to the news, you're misinformed. So yeah. no matter what I do, I'm fucked. What am I supposed to do as a Christian understanding that I'm doomed? Well, again, was, uh, that taps into, again, that your body is a temple of the Lord. It says, don't fear about those that can kill the body because, you know, your, your, your soul has been secured. What does is, what is the fallen watchers want equivalent? They want their kids to have bodies back. They want mass international demonic possession. That's truly what I believe the mark of the beast or accepting this technology into your, into your body. That's going to be... Um, I don't know. It's going to be a very scary time. And I'm already seeing a lot of folks, like when I was going into work one time, it was actually during COVID. Um, I came in and I opened the door and there was a line of people clocking out from the first shift. And I, I turned around, everybody was on their phone. I literally went like this to every person I passed as I was walking past them. Nobody, even, they couldn't look up to their periphery vision. I could have just conked them all in the head with a sledgehammer. They all probably wouldn't know the difference because they're so wrapped up into their phones. And I think as Christians, 
we are arbiters of that light. Did you ever watch the movie The Mummy with Brendan Fraser way back in the early 2000s? The original one? The first yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember when they jumped down into the little cavern tomb thing and they're like, well, where's the lights? And the girl walks over to the corner and she tips with the, the mirror. mirror. With the mirrors? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. And it bounced off the sun up above and then it bounced off all the other mirrors and you could see the treasure. You could see the tomb for what it was. For me. I see where you're going with this. Yes. That's what a Christian is supposed to be. Is that even if I'm behind enemy lines like crappy Canada or Australia, as I'm hearing it, that's amping up immensely. And even if behind enemy lines, like a lighthouse, the people are, they're scared of the rocks. And what is a Christian supposed to be? How are you calm during all of this? Oof. Food is expensive, right? Like it says in Revelation, it's going to already be happening, man. It says food's expensive. The politics of this world are absolutely crazy. There's going to be wars. How are you so calm all the time? How do you have a peace of mind? Why are you against everything in this culture? Well, let me tell you about the light. And I'm not saying the light within you, saying the word. You know, that's what I'm saying. It says, well, let me tell you where my confidence stems from. Because I don't fear death. I don't fear about the afterlife. I Because again, my buddy, um, he's witnessing to his friend and he claims to be a Buddhist, but he's not like, you know, again, it's a microwave religion. I'm just saying that because I don't, I'm not really a practitioner, but I believe in the concept outlines of whatever was taught in that thing. But when he went up to the hospital, he had a little emergency thing and he was freaked out because he's like, nobody's here until my buddy showed up. He says, nobody's here. I could die alone. But what do you care? You're just going to go back into the earth and be worm food. I mean, to believe in evolution, you believe you're stardust, like what, like a space tumbleweed that came crashing down to earth and you're nothing, right? You just go back into nothing. You're already telling me you equal zero if you believe this. So what does it matter? Why should I care that you're dead? Do you want me to, again, that's your definition. That's your belief. You say you come from nothing. And I think that's one of the saddest things ever. Because if you do not think that God loves you, then you don't understand what the word, I put that on, the occult does a lot of this stuff, but there's the, he broke a spell. He shed blood on the cross. He said words at the cross and there was a sacrifice made at the cross, right? This is all sacred. And he comes back to life to break all of the evil spells of Baal worshipers and whatnot, right? Sacrifice his only begotten son, a lot of occultures. Abram, you know how long you waited for your son? I want you to sacrifice him for me. Why? Why would you want me to do that? You said he's gonna be my, just trust me, do it. Why did he do that? Because all surrounding cultures would sacrifice their firstborn kids. A lot of times they do this in Hollywood, but they have cover stories for why. Why? Because somehow they believe if they sacrifice their kid, that's going to be a down payment to become a god in an afterlife. Their firstborn son. I want to know if Abram, if you're radical enough to believe as much as these surrounding cultures are more, I want to know if you'd go to that extent for me. And of course he stops and he provides a sacrifice. Later on, he puts the perfect sacrifice on the cross. I wanted to know if I could trust you. And you proved it. You didn't ask why. I mean, why as in you said no, but you just did it. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for loyalty. I'm looking for people that will stand for me in a crowd when everything looks crazy. And I think when it comes to like somebody like with my name, Kroll, I was adopted, but Kroll means well-known, renowned. And Brandon means beacon of light or a hill. Lee, I was right after Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, means uh, sheltered from the storm. So you put my last name first. It means a well-known beacon of light sheltered from the storm. Now, until I submitted to actually what God wanted me to do, I was going through a little bit of a depression phase and I discovered that self-pity can be one of the greatest forms of pride. Now, equating that to what you just said, I could sit here and complain about how bad it's all getting from a man perspective, which I have every right to do. I, I agree. I'm living in the same world as everybody else. Or... I can sacrifice to whatever calling it is as a writer to write, articulate, share the information that you understand. And again, I'm not bragging, but I am smart comparatively to my, my, my peers. It's sad. I have lost. Sorry, bro. That the, 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 the barometer is so low that it doesn't, you're not saying much. If you, you're, you're, you're saying that you're smart compared to other people. I'm just fucking with you, man. Well, cause the, the, the average person is pretty fucking dumb. So well, again, it's not because of choice. I, I, I have, yeah. I, I'm not smart enough to fit in. I've done myself down in order just to go to a party. I've, I've held my tongue and not talked about certain things just so I could fit in. And I'm not smart enough to be stupid. 
because I want to talk about real things. I want to talk about compare contrast of how beautiful God is and how much, how beautiful the faith is in comparison to how ugly the world is. And they're not ready for that. And I'm not saying that in arrogance. I'm saying that in God, I really would love to fit in, but just like all of his prophets, Jeremiah, are you kidding me? I'm doing everything I can. I'm being put in a well. They're still not listening to you. I know. Samuel, they didn't reject you. They rejected me. Because we can never know the mind of God, but we can understand his heart. Because what is he constantly doing? I just want obedience. I want submission. And I want you guys to have confidence in that. Maybe you won't understand it on that half of the half of the way. But when you're up here, this is what your rewards in heaven are going to be, is that you put in your faith and confidence. You didn't try to run away like Jonah. Some people were asking me, well, do I just move out of the country to get away from all this? No. If the new world order, antichrist system, is going to be international, you can't escape it. Maybe if you go to the jungles and some of the mountains, maybe there'll be some exceptions. But for the most part, you're not going to be able to run away. And you shouldn't be looking to run away. Because you were put in the place that you are. You were assigned to this region or wherever. If God calls you to move to Alabama, go to Alabama. If he calls you to Canada, go to Canada. Wherever he's calling you. You are meant to be a light. Pointing to the Savior. Pointing to the word of what the hope and faith that's within you. So I personally, again, you can agree, disagree, who's ever listening. I don't put faith in man's system or government over God or try to unite the two. I say, you know what? I'm willing to sacrifice that. And say, you know what, God, I don't know what the future holds. But whatever I do have with the servant with the talents, whatever portion you've given me, I'm going to do the best I can to double that. Not be like the one that said, well, I was scared. I was, I was scared. I was going to lose the coin that you gave me. I don't have time for lazy people. Get out. I want people that are going to be laborers, servants. That's what he calls his followers, right? And because of that, we're not doing it because, again, it's like a marriage. I'm not doing it to be a patriarch or dictation. No, you're doing it out of love because it's mutual. I appreciate what you contribute to this relationship. I have a trust and a hope and a faith in you. And you mutually have that in me. Put your faith in Christ. He put faith in us to be ambassadors for heaven. Do you understand the significance of that contract? Were you baptized in the Holy Spirit to understand the context and clarity of the word? Or are you baptized in the world? A lot of people repent, but they never change. To be dying to self daily, daily, that is a lifetime experience, whether you're flawed or not, as we were referring before, whether you're flawed or not, that it takes constant work. So I think the best way to say is I'm not worried about what the future holds. I'm not freaked out. I'm, I'm sad that a lot of people don't want to know what we know, but I also am a little bit convicted with this. And I know some people are going to roll their eyes immediately and probably turn it off or write a mean comment review. I don't care. I truly believe that Christians in the last days are the last two witnesses in Revelation. That they're doing shows like this. They're reaching people internationally. And people are expecting two physical people to go into the Holy Land with the holy people and witness there. No. We were grafted in, Romans 11. And in Isaiah, it says that we, you, don't you know that you are my witnesses? Right. So if we are grafted into the olive tree and we are speaking the word and we're trying our best to inform everybody, that, again, we're looking at Trump. What if it's Christians saying, look to the word, come back to God. And you're going, no, 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 we can fix the country. And then everybody, you know, that we fix the cultures and morals first and then everybody will come back to God. Okay. So we're substituting the word. That's Antichrist, remember? That's, the, that's the, one of the definitions right there. So I, I, that's for where I'm coming from, is that if we are the two witnesses, and most folks are ignoring us, but we're getting a small conversion, that's the awakening, quote-unquote, but we're expecting it culturally, culturally, as opposed to spiritually. Now, I'm, I'm submitting to the word, or some people are saying, Brandon, where can I find that book? You know? Or I watch, I've, I've had thousands of DMs. Thousands of DMs where people are saying, thank you. Or I listened to that show and you made me relook at my whole world. What's, what's the book that you read that gets you to that point? And it's not, again, it's not about me. I'm pointing always to the, do your own research. But I'm glad something I said made you convicted. Because a lot of people are triggered in this world. Well, you should be convicted spiritually. And if you're not submitting to it and you're rather yelling at me with all your other religions that you've added into your life, whether it's your patriotism, this thing, fill in the blank, whatever. As opposed to saying, you know what? I'm going to look into what you said. 
because I do not know. Like you, like you've been saying to me, I'll look into it. I'll come to my own conclusion because that's what ultimately Christian's supposed to do is convince, convert. Yeah, I dropped, I dropped the blank of what the third one was, but I had it outlined, but it's a little bit too much right now. I'm going on a rant. Sorry, but th does that, does that answer your question of where, um, where a Christian maybe should be looking and focusing on? Yeah, because this is exactly where I come from. Awesome. I've put, I've awesome. put my whole career. I have a very high, like I have, I, I was a sales engineer. I was an engineer by trade and I had to quit everything when they asked me to get vaccinated or else I'd lose my job. I would not be creating content if it wasn't for the fact that I'm unvaccinated because I refused to do they what they wanted monster. me to do. They created a monster. I say this all the time, but you're absolutely right. They created me. I, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today if it wasn't for the fact I exchanged luxury for my belief in God. Yes. This is what I did. God yes. told me to do this, not because it's easy, just because I can and I'm right. supposed to. Because right. this has not been easy. Hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It's still the hardest thing I do every day, but yet I'm not scared of dying. As you said earlier, I'm not worried about dying. That just means I get to meet my maker sooner. Yes. So I don't have a problem with dying. And I will say what needs to get said until the day I die. I'm never, I've never censored myself, nor will I ever. Is it going to cost me? Absolutely. More, mm -hmm. more like... It's going to cost my physical body. It's not going to cost my soul though. Yes. So yes. this is where it comes from. And I, I, the last part, I totally agree with you. If it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for Christ, if it wasn't for me following my heart, because I strongly believe that God speaks to us through our heart. We just need to listen. If it wasn't for that, I don't know what, I don't know how I could handle the world. I am, I am capable of being very driven and very calm about this because I believe in God first and foremost. Yes. I believe that everything happens for a reason. There's no coincidence. And even if I wanted to change everything around me, I can't, I don't have that power. And it's not my responsibility either. It's, it's freeing to understand that. And I don't know how people, I understand why people are so mentally sick when they don't understand something as fundamental as you were put here for a reason, it's not going to be easy, but that's what you're supposed to do. So shut the fuck up and do it. So I love it, man. I, I really, really appreciate you coming on the show. I did not exp I didn't know what to expect as a conversation, but I really, I really enjoyed having you on. Hopefully we'll do it again. And from there, as I always do, I want to close with a prayer. And so God, thank you for everything that you do for us. We are very grateful for all our blessings. Please give us the courage to stand up for what we know is right. The strength to speak what needs to be said and the will to help and serve others. Amen.